What you doing? I am making straps. Making straps. Making straps. I'm just marking where I'm gonna punch the holes. Mm. To go on this. Hey everybody, my name is Aquila and this is a Lefty Nigger Podcast episode. I just looked it up, 240? If I'm wrong, I'll correct myself here. Uh, This is a podcast mostly about yarny, fiber type things. So knitting, crocheting, spinning, etc. Sometimes dabbling in other crafts. And I will show that to you when I come across them. I have a cat uh, that is gonna bother me probably this whole clip, but it's okay. Okay, come from Baltimore, Maryland. And we just had Marilyn Sheep and Wool. Uh, husband, kids, cats, etc. And I try to record through the week and post on the weekend. That hasn't been happening as consistently lately, but I appreciate everybody for coming back and watching. Or if you're new, welcome! Glad to have you here. Uh, today is already Wednesday, May 8th. Here's Luna, the good old Luna sighting. Say hello! Um, and I've been a crafting fool. I have been doing lots of crafting. So first off, actually first, number one, I finished my love note. I showed you guys pre-blocking. I I should just grab it. Hold on one second. One second. I have already worn this twice. I wore it to the Frederick Fiber Festival and I wore it to Marilyn Sheep and Wool. I love it so much. It is such a great sweater and... I will insert pictures. I'll I'll show you guys the sweater and then I'll insert some pictures. But I love it so much. It is blocked. And I explained in my last episode, I was able to knit the sweater like in a super affordable way because uh, all the yarns for this I got on clearance bins or fill a bag type items. Like, yeah, it's... It was, it's amazing. So I'll insert some pictures here. Um, and I love it. I love it so much. I'm always like not sure what to put under it, but I've worn two different colors underneath of it. I wore like a green kind of like this color under it once. And the other time I think I just wore like a flesh colored shirt under it and it looked great both ways. (sighs) Links and stuff will all be down below this. So if you click the more button down below this video, I try to link everything that I talk about in case you have any questions um, and they're not answered there. And if you have any questions, leave a comment and I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. But I love this. I love this sweater. It was, it was perfect for Marilyn Sheep and Wool. I was nice and warm. I wasn't cold. It was a rainy Marilyn Sheep and Wool and that was, um, it was fine. It wasn't as bad as like a two years ago. It was like pouring down rain. Like pouring. Like bad. The only thing is once you get in the closed buildings, it's like humid from all the body heat and talking and whatnot. I'd much rather, I was much happier and more comfortable out in the open barns just in general. Okay. So I've been doing some crafting. So first off, I have wanted to make coil bowls with sewing (laughs) for a while. You saw my adventures in making coil bowls with wrapping yarn, and I love doing that. I'm actually going to be doing a tutorial at my work as part of one of our lunchtime craft sessions, and I'm excited. I busted out, this was all stuff I had even the core, except I did end up buying more core for this. So I've already gifted my other two that I made. So I'm going to show you pictures here, a bigger bowl with like a smaller dish, which you could use for maybe like, um, jewelry on a side table or whatever. But I used all this Halloween fabric that I had. I made bags for my knitting group years ago out of some Halloween fabric. And I love it so much. The other two bowls, um, it's a cotton core. So it's expensive if you buy it at an actual craft store, but you can buy cotton clothesline or they have it on Amazon, um, cotton, the Amazon basics, but at Lowe's or Home Depot, if you have a hardware store, you can buy that and it's, it's even cheaper. 
So the the thing with this is this this core was a quarter inch core versus the other ones, which I think was like three eighteenths of an inch core. So you couldn't see the fabric as much on the other ones. And all I did is I wrapped the fabric strips, I cut strips and I wrapped them around the core and I put them through my sewing machine using the zigzag stitch. I started here and you just line them up next to each other and use your zigzag stitch. Now I did lengthen my stitch to like a seven out of 10 or seven out of nine on my machine. Also, I used a heavy duty sewing machine needle because you're going through quite a bit. I mean, I think I, I well, I wouldn't have chanced it with a needle that wasn't like a denim needle. You, you need something sturdy. I loved making these and it was stuff I had on hand. So I was very excited to be able to do that. I have other fabrics that I'm going to make some other dishes, some other bowls. That's not Halloween. I have enough fabric to make more Halloween bowls though, too. Because, you know, when you buy stuff, you buy stuff. <laughs> That's terrible. Okay. What else have I been, been working on? Because I've been working on all kinds of different things. I found scrubby stripes. You guys know I have my scrubby tutorial up on YouTube for free. I love making my scrubbies out of this. It's a crochet with a half double crochet stitch and I love it. I want it, so I, I've never seen this before, so I bought the stripes. I bought a second one. I'm going to show you that in a moment. But the other one I bought, Scrubby Stripes. Now these, I've talked about this, Scrubby comes in 3 and 3.5 ounces. The 3 ounces are the variegated and the stripes. The solids come in 3.5 ounce balls. Okay, this color is called Peachy. The one I'm going to show you. And I wanted to see how it would work up in my pattern. And I think they're so fun. So obviously you're not going to get all the stripes in. So here's the starts in the middle and goes out to the peach. And then it went from the peach to a pink to a darker rose color. And then the rose is in the middle to the white. And it just keeps repeat. You know, it goes through all the stripes like twice. Maybe a little more. So this last one, I made one, two, three, four. I made five and a partial. This one's just a little bit smaller. I love them. I love them so much as a set. I got to weave in the ends, but these, I love them. So I'm excited to use this one. They had, I think, one more color at Joann's. I was at Joann's. This is called Cool Mint. I am, I love making these. They're great presents. I have lots of people that love them in my family, so I'm going to continue to make them. I've been working my squares for the vintage quilt cardigan, I believe it's what it's called. I will correct myself down below if I'm wrong about that. I didn't bring over my stack of squares. I have like 18 or 19 done. I can't remember. I'm working on another one. And I have its partner right here. So if you're new, I've only talked about this, I think, one time. This pattern uses all these squares that look like quilted square blocks. And you put them together to make a cardigan. I am using my Labyrinth. Was it Halloween? No, it was Christmas. Christmas. Halloween advent from a few years ago from Knitting Nakabi. They're all naturally dyed. They are 20 gram minis. This is DK, um, it's a DK weight pattern, but I'm holding it double. So I'm getting two squares out of both of my minis. So I'm using the two minis that were supposed to go together that came together. And I'm making one with the foreground and the background, like color one and color two. And then I'm switching it for the second square and I need 27 of them. And I'm like like 20, I think the one I'm gonna finish is 22. I can't remember quite off the top of my head. Oh, okay, so Maryland happened and of course we went. Normally we like to set a blanket down and hang out. The whole knitting group comes together and it's wonderful. 
my cat is going to be trying to get on everything. Come on, Luna, out of here. Okay, so I made some purchases. Well, first off, this is Mr. Froggett's birthday bash colorway from Froggett Yarns. I am not quite sure you can get this anymore. This was like a pre-order, but it is so pretty. I am so excited. Thank you, thank you for this. Um, I bought some fiber because Feederbrook Farm had these bags of fiber for, well, it depended. So they had like coordinated bags that were eight ounces and they were $20. Or you could buy two bags and you could buy two matching bags or two different bags that add up to 16 ounces or one pound for $30. Then they had $10 scrappy bags that were eight ounces. So what did I do? Well, oh, these don't belong in here, but I bought a scrappy bag because I thought it was fun. And I have, you know, I have, a, I have two wheels actually, and I really wanted to get back into spinning more but my, my first love really is knitting. I am like a knitting fool. I, when I get home, I want to pick up knitting. That's what I want to do. So I purchased that. Going to spin it on my wheel, etc. Right? Then I purchased... I didn't make money purchases. Really at all. Hazel got a mug. That's actually in the cabinet. So I don't have that to show you. But um, it was from the Lion Potter. So the Lion Potter also does soaps and honey and all different things. I bought some soaps. I got patchouli, flowery herb, bergamot oak moss, and gardenia. I have one of theirs in my shower right now that is called Earl Grey. And I love it. It smells so amazing. So amazing. So if you have a chance to buy from them, I think they're in Pennsylvania. Yes. Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. So and then Hazel got her first mug. She was like, you guys have really pretty pot hand thrown pottery mugs. Well, she didn't say that, but you guys have pretty mugs. I want a mug. And so I let her pick a mug out. That might not be what most parents do. She's eight and very responsible and takes care of things. So I was like, okay, go pick a mug. So she now has a, a mug. The only other thing I purchased was this cute little embroidery kit. It says sweater weather and it has mushrooms on the sweater. It's really cute. I don't know if I'm going to do it as keep it in the hoop or maybe sew it to a book bag. I don't know. Or a project bag. It is from Subido Farm Designs Embroidery Kit. It has everything in there. And oh my God, they had tons of all these samples in their booth of embroidery stuff, hand knit sweaters, and they're all made. All the patterns are done by them. I just think that's awesome. I've seen their booth before and I've never purchased anything from them. My friend Danielle and I both got a sweater weather. She got a different pattern though. So mine has mushrooms and hers has something else. I don't remember. Okay. You might see this peaky blue peaky this blue bag peeking out of the corner here well my birthday and mother's day coincide with Marilyn sheep and wool so john is a pretty lucky dude and i'm a pretty lucky woman because he can easily find me something for my birthday at Marilyn sheep and wool i mean what better timing um and I've been talking about getting an electric e-spinner, an e-spinner. And I must have brought it up like too many times while we were there. And John, who is so supportive of me and my channel and my makings, and he loved, he was, he wore his, um, Autumn League pullover to Maryland. He was like, I was warm. I was comfortable. I wasn't soaked through 
through and it was he's like this is a great sweater so he is very knit worthy he is very make worthy like if it was if it's not knitting he's make worthy he also enjoys the scrubbies very much they work really great on cast iron um he purchased me the eel wheel the electric eel wheel by dreaming robots and he got me the newest version that they have out is the 6.1 so I am now the proud owner of an electric eel wheel. The 6.1, the differences are it has two separate switches for the power and for the Z and S spinning, so a uh, uh, twist. So it'll spin one way to Z twist and S twist. So. Those used to be built into one button, and that was how you would turn it. You could turn it on or off that way. You can also turn it off using your speed button. This goes from a zero to six, and you get a foot pedal with it. And this also comes with six bobbins, and each bobbin, if I'm right, if I'm remembering correctly, holds like eight ounces of fiber. To me, that seems insane because my wheels, I had to get a jumbo flyer for my shacked, and I don't even think that holds eight ounces. I could be wrong about that, but it'll hold this whole bag if I, if I tried hard enough, I think. So what did I do? I got home that night. I had to put it together. I had to try it out. I had these two cute little bats, if I can remember to steal the picture off Ravelry, my stash photo. I'll do that. These were purchased in 2018 at the Shenandoah Valley Fiber Festival from Mustache Millie. I'm not quite sure if they're still around, but um, uh, if they are, I will link them down below. The back tells you what's in each of the bats. I had bought both of these two little bats and I didn't weigh them. Um, I should have, but I didn't. They're, the one I actually did, it was like 1.2 ounces or something. So they had to be pretty close. Um, but here is the card. Okay. One is micro 23 micron merino bamboo and tussa silk. The other is 23 micron merino angelina tensil corydale and polworth. So two different bats. Um, the one you could really tell with the, the silk in it. And I spun it. So I spun it as singles. And then I knew when I purchased these, I had the idea of buying them, spinning them as singles, applying them together. And that is exactly what I did. So here you go. Here is my spun. I tried in the bat. Um, I might have a picture of it laid out. I can't remember they kind of went in like a color order. So I spun it in that order. So the colors on one ply all went one way. And then in the other one, they all were different. It was different colors. So they all stayed together also when I did this. So it's pretty balanced. I mean, you, I can't hold it. It's, it twists on itself a little, but not a whole lot. I am pretty happy with it. It, ended up being close to like uh, 150 yards. So if I weigh this for real, for real, I'm probably close to a sport DK. And I love it. So the next thing that I think I'm going to spin on this is I have some Jacob downstairs that John had purchased that he thought he was going to want to try to spin at one point. And he might now on this, I'm not, not guaranteeing anything. Um, but, uh, he said, well, you could spin it for me and make me a hat. <laughs> he bought it in with the attention of spinning it and then asking me to make, I think a hat was always his intention. So I love this little thing. It was, I believe it was like $300. Okay. So for an affordable piece of spinning equipment, this is very affordable. The what from what I've heard, the customer service is amazing. I haven't had to use that, but um, and it uses Scotch tension, so in case you needed more information. And I spun on this. 
pr probably two hours straight, maybe even more, two and a half. And I felt the motor, it wasn't warm at all. Although, I mean, I was not spinning super fast. I was only spinning at like 2.5. Um, but the motor never got like hot to the touch or warm to the touch. So I think that's pretty great because it's kind of, you know, it's just this tiny little motor spinning this wheel, this flyer, you know? So I don't know. All right. And that's, um, that's what I got. That's what I have to show you. I don't know what else I'll show you in sub subsequent clips, but if I do break out that Jacob, I will try to remember to take video of it. Um, so you can see it and then you can see before and afters. Like, I, I think that's fun to see. So, um, yeah, that's, that's what I got for you today. So th I know this was a long clip because I had all this stuff to show you because it's been like two weeks of, of making and I haven't really, I just did a Shannon, uh, not a, I did a Frederick Hall video in the last video. So technically this is like two weeks worth of stuff that I needed to like get out into the world. So yay, I'm very excited. I think it turned out, I love like only the one bat had this like teal, this bright, bright teal. I don't know, I love it. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I thought about trying to put it through my sock machine with the DK weight and using Lycra and making like a shorty pair. I might still do that, I don't know. Hopefully you'll stick around long enough to see what I actually knit out of this. <laughs> All right, until the next clip, guys. I'll see you then. Hey, everybody. It is now Sunday, May 12th, and it is Mother's Day here in the United States. So I know that can be a very touchy subject for people, but I just want to put it out there that I am thinking of all of the people who consider themselves mamas. So here we go. Let's talk about what I've been working on. So... <sighs> Well, first, let me just say thank you to Valerie from A Visit with Nana and Papa. If you um, don't follow their podcast or follow Val, I'll put the information link down below. But I got this beautiful package. I've, I've seen this yarn before, okay? So I've seen the Granny Square Red Heart and Greens. She knows me so well. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this, but uh, maybe I'll try Granny Squares. Maybe it'll end up being something else. I'm not quite sure, um, but this is so cool. It's the Black Cyber Leaf is what it's called. Well, yes, Black Cyber Leaf. I just think that color is beautiful. The other thing, I've not seen this, so I'm excited to see what this is all about, but it's called um, Biddy Stripes, and it's by Red Heart Super Cyber Saver, and it's called Biddy Stripes. Has anybody used this before? I'm just curious. It looks cool, like it's small stripes. This is the box, uh, crayon box colorway, very aptly named. Um, the other two yarns I have here, you guys have seen me use before if you're not um, a new viewer, and if not, you may have seen these out in the world. So both of these are Patton's Croy. This is the Sox FX, actually they're both FX. This is the copper colors. I love cranking this yarn so much. It is a toothy, woolier yarn, similar to, uh, gosh, I'm not going to think of any of the names. Do I have one here? This is not what I was thinking of. But Regia, it's similar to like a Regia. Now I got to sh shove that back in there. That's all my self-striping. Okay, and then the other was Patton's Croy FX, and this is the Clover Colors. I have actually used this one before. I love this colorway. I'm excited about this colorway because I've never used it. And the last thing is the Red Heart Scrubby, which you guys know I love. And I got three colors. They're all the variegated skeins, so they're the three ounce skeins. And so I'll just name the colors real quick. This is Candy, Citrus, and Jelly. So thank you. I love making scrubbies. There may be some scrubbies in Val's future. <laughs> Just saying. Um, all right, so let's say, let's see. I have been working on, which I called it the wrong name, the Vintage Quilt Cardigan. 
name. I called it something else. Now I'm questioning if that's right. I will make sure it's linked down below, but I have 26 squares, y'all. 26. So there's three versions of this sweater, and I am making the second version, which takes 27 squares. Look at this craziness. 27. I should lay them out and take like a video or something to show you guys. But yeah, there's a few in here. And this is, I'm going to talk about it a little bit. There was a few in there that, um, I couldn't get two squares out of. So I don't know if my tension was off or the skeins were light. I, I, I don't know. They were 20 gram minis held together to make a DK. And I was able for most of these to get two squares. Also, what I did just for clarity is there are so many rows because you're working. Let me grab one. Okay. You work this way. Okay. Um, on these first few, I did a bind off and a cast on and a bind off. And I did the amount of rows in the chart. I was quite nervous after two sets that I was low in yarn. So what I did, I altered the pattern just slightly. And instead of counting row one as row one, my cast on, I counted as row one. And then on my next pass, I did row two. Um, so, and I did the same with the top because you would have done a row, however many rows, the last row of the chart, but instead of the last row of the chart, which is all one color anyway, I just did my bind off. Um, this made me feel much more confident that I wasn't going to run out of yarn in future squares. And I didn't. After I changed that method, I did not run out of yarn. These two, I ran out of yarn. So I have these on... I have both of these on waist yarn. And what I am pretty sure I'm going to do, because the last two colors are a variegated skein. Not that I don't love the variegated blocks that I have in here. I'll show you another example of a variegated one. Like this is the finished one of the one that I don't have enough of, but it's really hard to see. And not that that's, I'm okay with that. But this is like another variegated. It's kind of hard to see the pattern. Again, I, I have some in here and that's totally fine. And I'm going to be okay with it. But what I think I'm going to do, because the last set that I held off to the side, which was like, I don't know, day 25 and 26 or something. Yeah, it was 25 and 26. I held these out of the squares because I wanted to do the last two sets, which were solid, more solid colors. So I think these are just going to not be in the blanket. Totally okay with me. Sorry, that's the bag. It all came in. It's a labyrinth bag. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rip these out. And I know I have enough of one color for each one of these. Um, so the one I ran out of, I'm going to take and put to the side. And the one I ran out of on this one, I'm going to put to the side. So what I think is going to happen is, yeah, because I ran out of, I think these two are going to get married together. So it's a variegated and a solid. So I'm going to marry those to get together. I'm going to rip them out, weigh them and see which one has more. And that one's going to be the background color because you use, I think you use more, you definitely use more for the background color than you do the foreground. So that is my plan. And then I'll just have um, half of a mini for leftovers. This still, I'm going to have to do a collar or just really, it's not even so much a collar. It's really like a ribbed edging. And then I'm going to have to attach sleeves. So I do though have a, I have a solid that came with the, I'm not going to dig it out of that bag, a solid that came with that. So, all right. We purchased this fiber. John thought he was going to possibly spin yarn and he tried and I told him it's another tool that you have to just like practice on and he was just not feeling it then and he may try again and I'm okay with that. So this is the remnants of what he had tried to spin. So I kept it because I have hand carters and I'm going to just cart it back out. It won't be the same, exactly the same effect because 
This yarn is called Humbug Merino. Now, I had to look this up because I didn't know what it meant. This I We purchased these at um, Flying Fibers in Pennsylvania, and it was um, four ounces, around four ounces for $18, Humbug Merino. So all this is, in case you're curious, so here it is in like the ball, the fiber form, fiber form. Um, all it is, is it's two strands, two, two hunks of merino, one gray, one white, all natural. And when you spin it together, it gives you this barber pole effect. So that's what that means. Hum, Humberg. I, I totally didn't know that. And I had to look it up. So it's really beautiful. And I have spun half of this onto one bobbin with my e-spinner. And it does give you that barber pulling effect for the most part. I did notice the white was a lot harder to draft than the gray. Um, so it did make it a little difficult when I was drafting them together. The white was hard to draft and the gray just was fine. So I was kind of like yanking it on it. So what, what I ended up really doing is I split this many, many times, making sure I had a little bit of gray, like splitting it this way. I split it many times to get more of a pencil roving, um, keeping some of the white and some of the gray in each strip because I wanted to keep that barber pole effect. So um, I'm going to spin the other half on another uh, bobbin and I'm going to have a two ply. I don't know what the weight will be, but I am excited for this. Pretty cool. And that's it. That's what I have. That's what I have. We um, celebrated my birthday yesterday, and then today is Mother's Day. Um, we decided, um, John was like, what would you like to do? And normally we, you know, Sheba Wool Weekend is so close to my birthday that we usually don't do a whole lot. And not, I'm okay with that. We have in the past done things. I'm not saying we haven't. But I'm not one to be like, oh, I need, we need to do this. Sometimes it's like something really like simple, like let's just go walking around this town or, or whatever. So we decided to go to Ledoux Gardens, which is a, I'm going to mess this up. It's a topiary garden. Dang it. Or is it a botanical garden? I believe it's a topiary garden. I'll put a link for the place down below in case you're interested. They do Halloween. They set up like thousands of lit pumpkins. They do a Christmas event too. Um, but it is the Ledoux was the owner of this property. You can tour the ma manor house, which we didn't do. Um, but we did take, which you can do, a blanket and food and you can have a picnic on the grounds and you can pick whatever garden you want. We ended up in the backside of the lilac garden and there's the big buddha statue there and we kind of went it was between the lilac garden and the wildflower garden so the wildflowers are still all kind of like developing and they're not bloomed yet but it will be super pretty when it is i'm going to insert video at the end of this if you are um if you want to stay tuned for that and watch all, any video that we took it was beautiful and we had a great time and we do want to go back for future um um visits only because um, really, you got to think about it's going to change through the seasons. So right now it's spring and all the stuff that comes up for spring is happening right now. So it was, it was nice to do that with my family. We had a great time. And then we had just a few family members here last night and it rained a little, but we had a great time playing wiffle, wiffle ball. <laughs> yeah, it's wiffle ball. John got a new set and it's called Wizzle? I don't remember. Wizard? Wizard Ball? No, I don't know. It reminds me of Wiffle Ball. But it's like a set, and we were out there playing in the rain, and it was a really fun time to, to do that. Had some, had a few beers, we ate snacks, and had a fire, and played that. And it was, it was really nice. So I hope everybody is well, and taking care of themselves, and working on all the things that you want to work on, and just please check in on one another when you can, and, on, and you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's a hard time out there for people and we're all going through something different. And even though it might not feel like you're, you know, you have people, but there's people, you're not alone. So, all right, until the next episode, I hope you all have a 
wonderful however amount of time. So peace, love, and happy crafting. Stay tuned for the videos. Bye!